flying high, flashing wings across the sky. Jordy Racer, Jordy Racer, on the road, in the street, hear the sound of pounding feet. Jordy Racer, Jordy Racer, fly. The story so far. Mickey Stone has invited Spuggy to Radio Newcastle to be interviewed about his sponsored pigeon. Later that day, Spuggy went round to Baz's place. There was a truck outside. Spuggy had seen it twice before. Then, Baz showed Spuggy his best pigeon. There you are, Spuggy lad. The perfect lady. What happened next? A pigeon flew into the loft. What did Spuggy see tucked into its ring? Gospel, Light of St. Mary, 4.30 Saturday. Baz said it was a racing tip. You go down. But Spuggy wasn't sure it was. Early the next morning, Janie called. Spuggy told her about the message. He had written it down in his pigeon book. Baz said later St. Mary was a racehorse. But then I heard Victor shouting at him. Who's Victor? You know, that bloke in the blue overalls. There's one way to check if it is a racehorse. Have a look in the papers. What are you doing, man? Uh, Dad, is there any horse race at Gosforth tomorrow? Horse racing at Gosforth? Why do you want to know that? That's no nice sport for young lads. I just wondered. Well, there's not. Now, how do we out the house and play, will you? <laughs> hey, and I hope you're not planning to wear those old trousers this afternoon. It's a radio show, Dad. No one will see them. I will. So when Spuggy and Mam arrived at Radio Newcastle, Spuggy had his best trousers on. That was Spuggy's first visit to our local radio station. You know, he must have been quite nervous coming here for the first time, not quite knowing what was going on. I think we've time to give you a quick tour of our studio. Now, the people I'm interviewing, like Spuggy, sit there and talk into that microphone. This one's mine. And when the microphones are live, or switched on, if you like, the red light comes on, like this. And that's to warn people that we're actually on the air and to keep out or keep quiet. Now, I present the Mickey Stone Show from here every day, and I have to operate all this equipment myself. So it has to be fairly easy to get at, like the turntables and the tape machines. That's so we can play the records and the tapes and the microphones for interviewing lots of different people. But because I'm a broadcaster, I also spend a lot of time listening. Have you heard how different people can sound? It often depends on which part of the country they come from. And I've got something here to show you what I mean. I come from the north. I come from the south. So different sounds come out of my mouth. I live in a castle. A parcel, I see. No castle, I said. It's castle to me. Look in my book. I live in a flat. Look in my book. It's nothing like that. I'm a broadcaster. I always talk faster. My leg is in plaster. I cannot walk faster. 
I'm going down to the town for peaches and cream. I'm going down to the town for stotties and beans. He comes from the north. She comes from the south. So different sounds come out of me mouth. But even though we all sound different, the words we say all look the same. Look and read. Look and read. Hear the sound of look and read. Look and read. Look and read. Hear the sound of look and read. Oh, Mickey, you've chosen the winner of the mystery sound competition. Yes, the name's in this envelope here, and I'll be announcing it on tomorrow's show. Ooh. So, no peeking. Oh. Now, I've got lots to do before I go on the air. If you've got lots to do, then ER will make you a doer. Why don't you play us this record, Mickey? OK, Woody. Want to show you can do things at ER. And why? Cos er makes do a doer, see? Want to go for a spin now And see yourself to win now Add er and you're a spinner Add er and you're an easy winner Longing to go for a run now Wish you could do that jump now Add er and you're a runner Add er and you're a lovely jumper No silly jumper Feel like learning to drive now Trying to run in a race now Wish you could look and lead now Add er and you're a driver Add er and you're a racer Add er and you're a looker and a reader Cos er makes do a doer, see? Cos er makes do a doer, see? Ha <laughs> ha! Hey! Words which tell you what people do often end with this. Mickey, you broadcast. Yes. So, you're a broadcaster. And each one of you's a word watcher. And Blue Flash is a flyer and a racer. Ho oh ho! Let's find out more about how pigeons are trained to be racers. These pigeons are about one month old. They've been taken away from their parents and put in another part of the loft. New arrivals have to be shown where the water is. At feeding time, the corn tin is rattled. The pigeons learn that this is a signal for food. Once the young pigeons are used to flying around their home area for one or two hours, they're ready for the next stage of training. They're put into baskets and taken a few miles away from the loft. In a wide open space, the pigeons are tossed out one by one. This is a training toss. Training tosses give the pigeons practice at finding their way home and build up their strength and stamina for racing. Spooky was quite sure Blue Flash was going to be the winner of the big race. But his idea of a sponsored pigeon, that was brilliant. Oh, yes. Blue Flash was special, speedy, and sponsored. That's a cue to spin in the SP song, Mickey. All right, here we go. You've heard it before, Word Watchers. But this time, we've edited out some of the words. If you see a word beginning with SP but can't hear it, you sing it out loud. I'm sending you into space. Oh, it's too. You've got to go into space. I must have a... Hear me speak. You're sponsored by me. I'm special. So I went spinning into... We're terrific. It was so spectacular. I could hardly 
Sponsor me, won't you, Mickey? Yes. Now, let's get back to the story. Here's a copy of the newspaper Dad was reading. Did you see what Spuggy and Janie saw? Big burglary at Gosforth. Gold pendant stolen. Oh, yes. Spuggy heard you reading the news flash about that. Look, there's a photograph of the pendant. A pendant's a kind of necklace. It was a very valuable piece of jewellery. Not just because it was made of gold, but because it was very old and may have once belonged to a queen. Ooh. Here's a picture of her. Mary, Queen of Scots. I wonder if it really did belong to her. Mickey, what about our story? Right. What happened at the Hilton's house when Spuggy and Jenny saw that headline in the newspaper? Let's read. So, uh, Mrs. Helton and Mrs. Richard, he's going to be interviewed by Mickey Storm. Oh, yes. They're expecting you. Now, if you'd like to take those red doors, if you turn on the right, it's first on the left. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Mrs. Hilton and Spuggy, I presume? Yes, that's right. It's all right. You don't have to whisper. No one can hear you. Yet. Take a seat. Right, Spuggy, we'll be on any minute now, so just relax and enjoy yourself, OK? Rest of the family listening at home, are they? Oh, just his dad and his sister, Kath. This is Radio Newcastle. The time is exactly three minutes past two here on the Mickey Stone Show. And I'm joined in the studio by our first guest fundraiser of the afternoon, young Spuggy Hilton, no less, and his mum. Do you like to say hello to your dad and sister, Spuggy? Hello, Dad. Hello, Kath. Right, Spuggy, that's cleared the fluff out of the microphone. Now, tell us about your, your fundraising idea. It's all to do with racing pigeons, is that right? Aye, that's right. I understand you and your dad keep racing pigeons, and you've got this very special one. 
blue flash eye. He's brilliant. Mm -hmm. and, and tomorrow he's off to the big race, the Inland National, all the way from Folkestone, 300 miles down south. Him and 20,000 others. 20,000 pigeons racing all the way home from Folkestone. And the one that gets back to its own loft first is the winner, right? Wait, no, man. Some lofts are near the start than other. So it wouldn't be right. The winner is the pigeon that gets home to its own loft at the fastest speed. You have to work out how many yards they've flown per minute. Mm -hmm. And what speed can Blue Flash do? Nearly 1,500 yards per minute. Really? That's about 50 miles an hour, isn't it? God, it's as fast as my car. And the faster he flies in the big race tomorrow, the more your sponsors pay to charity. Is that the idea? That's right. So how many sponsors have you got so far, Spooky? Just one. <laughs> My friend Jeannie Chung. Never mind. It's a great fundraising idea. Got your sponsorship form there and I'll sign it for you. Spuggy's Pigeon Club was the race center for the Inland National. Fanciers had to bring their pigeons there to have their rubber race rings put on before being transported to Folkestone. From away clock, 86 TM, 2334. Name 115. 809. Cox, I'll cost that. Blue cock, 86 TM, 2302. Heard you on the radio, Spooky. Great, man. I should give you a year and sure. There you are. Of course, mine. If it was perfect lady you were sponsoring, you can make a sight more money yet. Ah, yeah. That's for the two. Yeah. I'll take it, I'm going to get up. I'll get your money done. A lot of fanciers wanted to sponsor Blue Flash. Hilton and Son. Blue cock. TN 1487. Pigeons! <laughs> Who's next? That's the one. Thank you. Pass me one. Is that Elliot? Is that the Elliot? Yeah. Anywhere? Five! 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 When the last pigeon had been loaded, the huge transporter moved off down the road. Well, man, I hope you're a good loser, that's all. Uh, what about that driving job, Ray? Starting tomorrow. What do you say? Will you take it? Aye, I will. <laughs> <laughs> 